What's up, guys? Hey, this is Christian Brindle with Six Faga Medicare Agent, and we're back with another video. Thank you for being patient, by the way, to our loyal and wonderful audience of killers. Um, didn't have any videos last week outside of Taco Tuesday. That was because a couple of things had a lot going on in the office. Very, very busy week. We were revamping the studio here. We have a little bit of a different look, a little bit of a different setup here. Um, not complete yet, so go easy on us, right? The bookshelves aren't full. We still got more stuff to put in the bookshelves, so go easy on us. We're still working on it, um, but it's going to be well worth the wait, and I appreciate all of your patience and support um, while we weren't putting up videos. Um, but today we do have a new video for you, and it was a, a topic that was suggested to me by somebody in our group, an agent in our Facebook group, in the, in the Six Figure Medicare Agent Facebook group, um, and I thought it was just so good that it deserved its own video. I don't know why I didn't think of it beforehand, and I'm really, really excited to talk about it. But before I do that, guys, we've got to talk about my favorite telemarketing lead company, and of course, that is Lead Heroes. Guys, where, whatever you need when it comes to telemarketing leads, whether it's final expense leads, Medicare supplement leads, turning 65 leads, Lead Heroes has got you covered. They have trained and qualified telemarketers that will make inbound, outbound calls for you, I almost said inbound, outbound calls for you to try to find qualified and interested prospects in your area or any area of your choosing. Um, guys, it's a no-brainer to have it at least a part of your marketing portfolio in 2021. Just because you watch this video, they're gonna give you 10% off any order you make on their website. Link to their website can be found down in the description along with a coupon code, so go ahead and check them out, give them a try. Um, all right, guys, so in this video, we're gonna be talking about, and I'm a little bit under the weather, right? Um, any of you parents out there, as being a father of a two-year-old, right, um, they catch all kinds of nasty, disgusting diseases. And um, diseases, I'm being dramatic, but all kinds of nasty, disgusting sicknesses. And then they come home and they spread it all over you, you know? Um, and so I'm a little bit under the weather today, so bear with me if you can tell it in my voice a little bit. I can hear it myself. So just wanted to address it. Um, but guys, <clears throat> in this video today, I wanted to talk to you guys about how can a new agent get their first 100 clients? And this is exciting to me, right? Because your first 100 clients is a milestone, right? This is a really, really exciting target for when you first get into the business. I remember when I first hit my first 100 clients, when I first hit client number 100, 100, zero, zero, and I remember being so excited but it didn't last very long. And then I was like, okay, now what? Now I got to get to 200. Now I got to get to 500 and so on and so forth um, as an agent. But that first milestone is so important because in my personal opinion, if you can get 100 clients in this business, you're here to stay. You're not just a guest. You're not just going to be in it for six months, a year, write a couple apps here or there and then fizzle out. Got news flash for you. Most agents do that. 90 plus percent of insurance agents, whether it's Medicare or not, don't last longer than three years. Look at 8% Nation. Cody Askins has an entire conference built on the concept. So if you can get to 100 clients though in the Medicare game, in my personal opinion, it, it's, a, it's a sign that you're here to stay. I've got a newsflash for you guys. A gigantic majority of agents will never write a hundred clients or have a hundred clients under their belt at one time. A, a huge majority. This might seem shocking to you, but because there's so few in our industry that actually become successful. The reason that we put out this channel and this content is to kind of help change that narrative and to help people hit that first six figures of income. But before you can hit six figures, you got to get to hundred clients first. So first things first, what does a hundred clients give you in the Medicare game? Well, currently, let's just say um, you are writing Medicare Advantage, right? Um, of course, you're going to have some Medicare supplements sprinkled in there. It just kind of depends on the state and your contract and that kind of thing in terms of your commissions. But um, currently, the street-level Medicare Advantage renewal commission per year, let's say you're getting renewals, is 270 right? So divide that up by 12. You're going to be making $22.50 per month on those 100 members, assuming you haven't gotten advanced on any of them or anything like that. So that renewal right there 
is $2,250 per month in renewals coming in every month. Sound pretty good, right? That's what the Medicare game is built on. And it's based on, it's essentially building a long lasting relationship with your clients and customers, doing an excellent job for them, taking care of them over a long period of time to where they want to stick with you. And the renewals keep flowing in. Um, so getting a hundred clients is kind of that milestone because let's say you're making 10 sales a month and let's say some of them are new to Medicare Advantage sales, some are not, some are Medicare supplements. Let's say you're making an average of maybe 350 on per sale, just for example, let's say for street level. Well, at that point, you're making 3,500 a month in new commission plus your renewal. At that point, you're making almost six grand a month and that's if you're not cross-selling. You know, so that gets to the point where you can really kind of start to blow this thing wide open. Um, now, what's the best way to get to 100 clients? Where do you start? Um, let's just say you have zero. And let's just say, I mean, obviously, my, my, my first thing is you got to learn your products. You got to learn Medicare. You got to learn this stuff. Um, but you don't want to be one of those agents that has analysis paralysis and feel like you have to know every little thing before you can get out there and talk to anybody. Yes, you want to know what you're talking about. But what I did as a new agent at 20 years old is I would spend my days making calls on the phone, dialing, trying to make appointments. And then I was studying the products and the Medicare stuff in the evening. I would take it home with me at night and study it. I was very committed. Most of you probably aren't. Um, you might not be willing to do that, what I just said. Um, but... If you're spending your prime time hours, let's say, you know, nine to five every day studying and trying to, you know, doing webinars and trying to learn all this stuff and, you know, and, and that's the time period you're putting into it and you're not getting out there and building connections or making um, calls or you're not getting in front of clients or customers, that's why you don't make it. Medicare is a very, very complex um, thing to sell. You know, Justin Brock says it best. He says, yeah, um, Medicare is the, the hardest thing to learn, but the easiest thing to sell. Whereas something like final expense might be the easiest thing to learn and maybe the harder thing to sell. That's very true. You need to understand that it takes a very long time to feel like you really know everything about Medicare. And really, I got a newsflash for you. Nobody knows everything about Medicare ever. I'm always constantly learning new things. It's a very, very broad and wide spectrum of information. And so you need to be very focused and very committed to making your, your prime hours during the day all about getting in front of clients and prospects. That is number uno. Number uno. Number one, guys, is you have to be getting in front of clients and prospects. So this is what I would do. Um, and let's just assume, you know, you don't have a gigantic marketing budget because most agents don't. I would figure out whatever your marketing budget is, right? Whatever it's gonna be per month. Is it $500 a month? Is it $1,000 a month? Like what can you spend per month? Are you living off of savings? What's your financial situation look like? If you can't spend anything, then just skip this part. But whatever it is, let's figure that out what that is. And you wanna be spending that on leads. Leads are gasoline for your business. If, you're, if your business is just a little flickering flame, buying leads is like pouring gasoline all over it and it's blowing it up into a huge fire. This is what you need to do. So if you have maybe, let's say your budget's $500 a month and that's what you can spend, right, comfortably. Um, then what I would do is I would kind of figure out what kind of leads you want to work. You know, maybe you do a direct mail drop. Maybe you do some lead heroes leads, no, no um, bias there, right? They're the sponsor of this video. Um, maybe you do some Facebook leads, just buy per lead. Like you just kind of figure out what you're gonna do. Maybe, maybe, just maybe, you buy 500 age leads for a dollar a piece, right? I mean, that's a step above cold calling, in my opinion. Um, you just try to figure out some way to get some paid um, people in front of you. The thing you have to understand when it comes to writing business and growing a book of business, everything is going to either cost you time or money. Time or money. Which one do you have more to give up? At the beginning of your business, it's probably going to be more time than money. But you, but in my opinion, when I started in the business, I was cold calling for people turning 65. 
I did it for years. I was very good at it. But one thing I can tell you is it's probably one of the most least efficient ways and least time constructive ways of getting in front of clients and customers. You can do that if you want to, but it's more difficult today than ever. There's more rules and more regulations, robocalls, people don't pick up the phone as much, blah, blah, blah. Um, if I was starting over today, this is what I would do. I'm, I'm being honest with you guys. I would spend about whatever I could spend a month on leads. Let's say it's $500 a month. So that way I have some consistent lead flow. The next thing I would do is I would make sure that all my friends, family, inner circle know what I do. Now, does this mean you have to slide in their DMs and bother them and, and burn bridges and wreck relationships like a lot of the MLM companies want you to do when they're trying to get you to recruit people that don't want to be recruited? No, that's not what I'm saying. But post content, post articles, um, announce, make a big post and announce it on your Facebook page. Be like, hey, uh, friends and family, just wanted to let you guys know I've started a new career. I'm helping people with their Medicare health plan. If I can help anybody, let me know. And you might have, you know, an aunt or a neighbor or someone in your church reach out to you. You might just get a couple right there, right? We just The, the goal right now is just to get to 100. I'm not trying to get to 1,000 right off the bat. Let's just start with 100. So if you could get two, three, four from a post like that from people in your inner circle that just want to support you, family members, well, there you go. You're off to a nice little start there. The next thing you guys want to do, in my personal opinion, um, is you want to get out there and you want to build relationships and referral partners. There's no better lead than a referral, mainly because the person that referred them to you already has that person's trust and they already have that person's confidence. So they're essentially relaying some of that trust and confidence over to you, right? They're relaying that over to you because they're recommending you. So they're like, oh, this I like this person. This person's trustworthy. If they recommend them, they might be good. My first employee that I ever hired here at the office, I'll kind of give you an, an example. Um, she was friends with my dad's assistant at the time. This was years ago now. Um, and I never hired anybody before. I was fairly young and I'd never hired anybody before. I just didn't have any experience with that. Um, and my dad told me, he's like, he, and cause, cause my dad's assistant at the time was an outstanding employee. One of the best that he's ever had, um, an office manager. And he told me, he said, well, if she knows her and they're friends, they, they're probably, she's probably pretty, you know, smart, hardworking, not, you know, dramatic as well, because they get along, they hang out with each other. Like, you know, like-minded people, they hang out. You know, they, they associate with one another. Um, and so I um, went forward. I mean, I interviewed her and everything, but I ended up hiring her um, and it turned out to be a great hire. She's been a fantastic person to help me with my business and she's been vital to my business. Um, and it's because my dad's employee knew her. We knew she was good. That credibility kind of leaked over right? This is the same thing with a referral. Um, you want to get out there and build referral partners. Get out there and talk to agents, financial planners, PNC agents, people that don't do what you do. Medicare, right? If you're trying to sell Medicare, get out there and talk to people that do insurance, but they don't sell Medicare. And this is what you pitch them, that you're, you're trying to build relationships. You're trying to build referral partners. You'll send your referrals to them for their services. Um, if they carry a health license, you can legally compensate them $100 per app if they carry a health license. So there's that. Um, if they don't want to do the Medicare business, this is the this is the pitch I always used with agents. We have a lot of agents here in Utah that don't do Medicare that refer us business all the time, consistently, year in, year out. Um, it's a big part of what we do at this point. So this is the pitch you want to give them. Be like, hey, you know, your clients out there right now are getting sold Medicare plans and you're essentially having nothing to do with it. And for all you know, this agent that's selling them the Medicare plan, they could be doing their um, retirement planning, their investments, their property and casualty, their life insurance, and they could be trying to replace your business. If you work with someone like me, someone that you know, we build a strong relationship, you know that I'm never going to replace your business. You know I'm going to protect your business. You know I'm always going to edify you, build you up. And I'm always going to send my people to you if they need help with any of those other things. I'm not going to touch it. I'm going to send it right back to you. It's someone you can trust and also you can profit. Because if you carry a health license, I can give you a $100 referral fee per um, client that you send me. So what do you say? You know, like that's a very powerful thing. 
because it's true and they know it's true because they don't know who is going in there and selling their clients their Medicare plan. It could be someone that is a jack of all trades and does all these kind of things and they're trying to replace their business too. It's much more safe for them to, to refer their Medicare clients to someone that they know, like, and trust, and that could be you. Um, and how do you do this, guys? Well, what I did when I started is I would just drop in in offices, show up with donuts one day, just randomly out of the blue, show up with bagels, right? Be creative, stand out. They probably get a lot of people throwing these kind of ideas at them. Make sure that you're standing out and you're articulating your point in such a way that you're irresistible. I have about 15 agents that send me referrals on a consistent basis all the time that don't do Medicare. Um, I get referrals all the time from agents. I probably write more business every year from referrals I get from other agents than 90% of agents write all year just doing everything. And it's because I built up that network. It took time, but this is what you should do as a new agent in my opinion. It's not fun. It's not easy. It doesn't happen overnight. But this is something you can do to get some low-hanging fruit in your business. Um, the other thing you want to do is you want to get with your carrier reps. You want to get with your carrier reps and see if they will essentially, um, go in with you on a lead order or maybe a, an educational seminar or something like that. Because like I said, you don't have time. You, you have, you have more time, excuse me, than you have money at this point as a new agent. Your carrier reps, if you can come with them with a good plan, a good strategy, a lot of times they'll be willing to help either go in with you on a lead order or maybe um, promotion for a seminar or whatever the case might be. Um, but you have to have a good plan. They want to see a good plan. Um, but they're willing to help you if you have a good plan because you're writing business for them. You just got to try to write as much business for that carrier as possible from that specific lead order or event or whatever the case might be. But that's a good way because when you don't have enough resources, sometimes getting the carriers to help you out is a good thing. Your carrier reps are a great resource for that. Build great relationships with the carrier reps. Make sure that they know who you are and, and make sure that you know you can um, come up with a good plan and, and approach that to them. You know, I, I, I'll give you an example. I did a 6,000 piece mail drop um, for, with, with, with a Medicare supplement carrier here in Utah. Um, it was a $3,000 order. They paid half, I paid half. There you go, right? Um, and the deal is I'm going, to, I'm going to essentially, as these leads start to roll in, I'm going to write as much business as I can for this carrier and they're going to benefit from it. Right? I mean, this is what you need to do. You need to think outside the box. Be creative because you don't have an unlimited time. You don't have unlimited money, excuse me, but you have plenty of time. You should anyway as a new agent. So use your time valuably. The other thing you need to do is you just need to get out in your community, right? Try to build relationships with 55 and up communities. See if you can go in and do educational events, sit at a table for an hour or two and talk to the residents. These are things you can do that are grassroots, pound the pavement stuff to get clients under your belt. Talk to your family members. Hey, do you know anybody that maybe you could, you know, send, you know, um, recommend to me that might need help with their Medicare? Like, not in a pushy way, just very lightly. It all counts, right? You get a couple here, a couple there, 10 here, five there. Before you know it, you have 100 clients, right? Before you know it, you have 100 clients. Now, the other thing you should be doing is as you start writing business as you go, you're going to have commissions start coming in. You need to reinvest those commissions into more leads. This is how you grow, right? Because if your marketing budget is $500 a month, let's say you're getting X amount of leads for that. Well, you start making more money, start making some sales. Now you spend $1,000 a month. Now you're getting twice as many leads. So you're making twice as many sales from those leads and you start to just scale up and up and up and up and up. Guys, when in your first 100 clients, in my opinion, you don't need to be worried about things like creating content. You don't need to be worried about recruiting people. You don't need to worry about any of that shit, right? Just get out there and sell. That is your main priority. Because in my opinion, um, you have no business creating content. You have no business recruiting agents or any of that stuff if you haven't sold 100 clients yet. Like, you just kind of need to get out there and spin the wheels a little bit. And trust me, what I'm telling you works. Drop some direct mail. Go knock on doors. Get out there and hustle a little bit. Everything I'm telling you has been tried and true for ton thousands of agents 
all over the country, and it's all worked for me personally. Um, getting to that first 100 clients is a milestone. You can do it. The only reason why you wouldn't do it is if you give up or quit, okay? Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, is there anything you wish I added? Or is there anything you'd like to add? Or is there any questions that you had that maybe I didn't answer? Do you agree with me? Disagree with me? Let me know. Drop it down in the comment section. Let's have a conversation. Drop a like in this video if you found it helpful so more agents like you can find it easier. Make sure to hit the subscribe button. Hit the bell so you're notified when we upload. And we'll see you next time. Thanks, guys.